I would like to tell a parable which I shall call The Value of Truth and the Damage of Untrue Statements. It will be a parable in two episodes. A man by the name of Bill and his wife moved to Idaho and met a fellow worker in their establishment by the name of Joe and got acquainted with him and his family. They were overwhelmed by the friendliness of Joe and his family, the high type of life they lived, the pleasant environment in their home, and they soon became close friends. <clears throat> to help repay Joe for kindnesses he had shown, Bill arranged an elaborate fishing trip onto one of the favorite lakes in Idaho, noted for good fishing. He had gone to some expense and came to Joe and invited him and his family to go with them on this following Sunday. Joe was a good Latter-day Saint. He loved to go to his priesthood meetings. He enjoyed the Sunday school and sacrament meetings with his family. <clears throat> at first he was at a loss how to answer Bill regarding the invitation. But he said, Oh, I'd love to go, Bill, but I really can't. I've got to go to church. My bishop expects me my wife would be unhappy if I didn't take them. Bill was gracious and accepted the apology and went on his fishing trip that Sunday without his friend Joe or Joe's family. The day was beautiful. The fishing was good. And all day Bill thought to himself, Poor Joe, what kind of a religion does he have that ties him down like this? How he'd love to be with me also. I'm glad I am not associated with or a member of any such church or establishment. The day ended. Bill and his family came home. And in the next week, about Wednesday evening, a knock came at the door and two handsome young men presented themselves. They were so attractive and courteous that Bill invited them in. As they were coming in, they announced that they were missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This all sounded interesting, but they added so-called the Mormon Church. Suddenly, Bill remembered that Joe was a Mormon. And courteously but firmly stopped the young men, talked to them a little, dismissed them with the excuse that he would have no interest in their message. As they left, he turned to his wife and said, why, we couldn't have anything like that. Uh, see the sad predicament Joe is in under the thumb of such a religion. <clears throat> That's part of the story. Another family moved into Idaho. The man's name was James, and he befriended a Latter-day Saint man by the name of Robert. Now Robert was just as friendly and accommodating as Joe had been with his friend Bill, and James felt indebted to Robert for the many favors that he had shown him, helping him in helping him get settled in his new home in Idaho. James felt 
that he would like to invite Robert on a lovely fishing trip, and he too, like Bill, made elaborate plans for such a trip on one of the famous lakes, and came to Robert to invite him and his family to go with him. Now Robert answered James in a more truthful manner than Joe had done. He said, James, I'd love to go fishing with you and your family. You're such excellent company, and I love to fish. And Sunday will be a beautiful day, according to the weather reports. But to tell you the truth, I enjoy so much more meeting with my fellow priesthood bearers on priesthood on Sunday at priesthood meeting and taking my family to Sunday school and to sacrament meeting in our church that I would like to decline this invitation but would love to go with you on some other day other than Sunday. James was surprised but he graciously accepted the apology for not going from Robert, and he too went fishing with his family. All that day he was thinking of his friend Robert, and as the day brought him so much joy and his outing so much relaxation, he asked himself, what can Robert have that is greater than this? What does his family think is more pleasant than a day on the lake with such enjoyable fishing? They came home, went back to their work, and on a Wednesday evening, two young men came to their door, knocked, like with Bill. James was impressed with their courtesy and good looks, their proper dress and manners, and invited them in. As they were coming in, they said they were missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly called Mormons. When they mentioned Mormons, James became interested. He said, you know, I have a friend, Robert, who's a Mormon, and I wish you'd tell me what he has that can make him happier on a Sunday than to be on a fishing lake enjoying such a heavenly experience as we had last Sunday. Come in, boys. Tell me all about it. Now, you see, these two stories are parables, but true to life. They illustrate how we often tell falsehoods, white lies we call them, to avoid offending friends. Perhaps we should, as James had done, think it through and know what we would say on such an occasion. We're usually wrong when we say, quote, I can't, I've got to, whatever we've got to do or think we have to, because we don't have to do anything. It's our own choice. And when we say we can't, we're probably wrong, because very likely we could if we wanted to. Now, the important thing is to tell the truth about what we want to do and do it. I think Joe had the same attitude towards religion, his meetings, as did James. But in the spur of the moment, he actually bore false witness to his friend Bill when he said he couldn't go fishing, because he could. And when he said he had to go to church, because he didn't have to go to church. 
the real truth was he preferred to observe the Sabbath day in the proper manner than to enjoy the blessings of the outdoors and the pleasure of fishing. Had he said so, Bill, like James, would have been very interested in anything so delightful as to attract his friend Joe in such a manner. The truth is very beneficial, and untruth is damaging.